What's going on YouTube? Burlington Northern HO fan here and today we've got another locomotive unboxing video. Today it's from Spring Creek Model Trains. We're gonna open this up. We got something special in here. Let's get my knife and we'll open this up. Well I didn't find my knife but I've got a razor blade that'll do just fine. This is going to be the first time seeing this obviously because it's still taped. Seeing what's in this box. I know it's in this box, but I'm not going to say it yet. It is Burlington Northern related. I already have one of these locomotives, but it's not this brand. It is this brand, but it's not this brand. So, there we go. Give me one second to get the invoice, just in case it's on top. Okay, the invoice was on top. Here we go box got some cardboard actually we'll probably use that for the layout and we've got this uh advertisement for a train show that has already passed oh no this is for next year okay well, maybe i'll go out to nebraska once sometime probably pretty cool wouldn't be the first time i've been out to nebraska all right here we go what do we got Oh, let's pull it out of the out of this box here, just like that. Make sure there's nothing else in here. Surrounded by newspaper, that's good. All right, unravel it out of the newspaper. Any bets in the comments on what this is? I mean, you've probably already seen it in the title, but... Okay. So, we've got a brown box. So, it looks like we need to open this as well. Or, maybe it just slides out. Yep. Oh, you see that dark blue box? Yes. Alright. Athern Genesis. It's a beautiful box. Let's see what it is. There it is. It's a GP50 Phase 2 white face paint scheme with sound. Look at that. All right. All right, let's take the cover off this bad boy. Okay. Looks like we've got... A warranty registration form, which is pretty neat. That's good. Some sign up for Ather News. Looks like we have what here? What do you have here? We have a. This is part of the warranty. We have our operator's manual and sound guide. Look at that. Sweet. All right. It's time for the reveal. Whoa, look at that. It's got a nice plastic cover. Very nice packaging. All right, let's cover that back up. Let's put that off to the side. Okay. Now let's go slide this plastic sheet off like so. We have our pieces of foam here another piece of foam right there any accessories that are in here that we see does not look like it so let's get this thing out of the packaging just like that coming out take that sheath off of there it's got the truck covers that are on there Set that down for a second. Move this stuff off to the side. All right, so we got a cover on the gas tank. 
Take that cover off. We've got our foam pieces in here to keep the handrail straight. Take those out. Just like that. Come on to this side and take this one out. And let's look at this thing. Let me get the camera closer to the table real quick. All right, now it's closer to the table. I'm gonna use this screwdriver to point out details. We've got our beautiful gas tank with our bell here. Right there, there's our bell. We have our filling and our gauge. We have the sanding lines here on the trucks, which are very nice. Our truck detail is very good. Look at that. Awesome truck detail. Our Burlington Northern logo is very crisp, very nice. We got the details on the top of the fans here, which is really cool. We got our lift rings, our, our horn, our dynamic brake fan. We have our beacon and our different antennas. And we have the front of the locomotive. We have our plastic McHenry coupler, our MU cables, and our glad hand for the brakes. Our pretty nicely detailed front of the locomotive here. Our ratcheting handbrake. We have the wipers with the drawbar, which is nice. And on the other side, we have our we have our sight glass, which is see-through. And again, we have the same detail on the gas tank. In the back of the locomotive, we also have our MU cables, MU cables, and our glad hand with the plastic McHenry coupler and our coupler cut lever. So, very nicely detailed. On par with the uh, SD40-2, the Scale Trains SD40-2 that we I unboxed not too long ago. So, let's get this thing over to the layout and see what how good this thing is and how how it sounds. All right, here we have it on the layout. And if I'm not mistaken, it is a Tsunami 2 decoder, which is just a blue Nami decoder without the Bluetooth chip. So, it should start as soon as we put power to the layout. And indeed it does. That sounds awesome. Okay, so I went through the manual and I pretty much figured out the different functions here. First off, we have our headlight with F0. If we go forwards in the forwards direction, so we have our headlight. On and off. And on F1, we have our bell. And then F2, we have our horn. In F3, we have a, a short horn. Then, on F4, we have the dynamic brakes, so if we were to start the locomotive moving, you can hear the dynamic brakes somewhat moving. And then, with our F5, we have a light function, not applicable on this one. F6, we'll here we'll have our light function, most likely that beacon on top. And then there it is, our beacon on top. We'll turn that off. And F7, we have our dimmer, so if we were to have our headlight on, we'll dim the headlight. F8 is to mute.
F9 is our brake squeal. And a release. F10 is our coupler. F11 does nothing. F12 does nothing. So, not many functions to begin with, which is kind of a shame, but it is a tsunami decoder, so it does sound very nice. Uh, most likely, we'll probably end up swapping to a blue Nami, since it's probably a 21 pin, and it'll be a pretty easy swap. So. Okay, I have had this thing run in, and a couple of things. One, it does not have a 21 pin or 8 pin or 9 pin socket. It has a stock factory installed Tsunami decoder. So it is kind of limiting that way, which sucks. It's, um, if I was to change the Blue Nami, I'd have to do the same thing that I'm doing to my scale trains, which I did finish. And I don't really want to do it again because that was a pain. And I'm just going to deal with the stock Tsunami decoder. I know for next time that if I'm going to get one of these, I'm going to get a DC, a uh, silent DC one because I'm not dealing with soldering wires. Speaking of soldering wires, on this layout, it needs a current keeper. On this switch right here, it goes over a dead zone and it will die. Now... I could just power that switch, but I have other locomotives that go over that switch just fine. So I'm going to just put a, a capacitor or a current keeper in this locomotive, which requires soldering, which sucks, but it is what it is. Anyway, enough of the negatives about this locomotive. It runs great. Uh, after I've ran it in, it, it runs awesome, as long as you don't run it over that switch which kind of sucks because it's part of the layout. So it's going to need a current keeper before I can do a full, you know, run around with it. The beacon light works, the headlight works, and that's all you get. The number boards do not light up. You have no truck lights. You have no courtesy lights, which is interesting, but it's still a good looking locomotive. I love it. I think it looks great. I was kind of upset about it at first, the way it, you know, I have kind of had to deal with it. But um, other than that, I think it's pretty good. So let's turn this thing back on. So I have been going, nope, I turned the power out to the track. I have been going through CVs and adjusting them. At first, it was very jerky because it had no acceleration or momentum. But now, I've messed with CVs. And now it has momentum. Which is good. See there, I barely touched it and it lost power. So it definitely needs a current keeper. So, because me barely touching it and rocking it just made it lose power. So, anyway. But yeah, let me go through a couple more CVs and then uh, we'll do a little switching action over switches that I know it doesn't have issues with. Because we're not going to be able to do a full circuit because of that switch there. So, let me get through the CVs and I'll be back with you. Alright, so couple more developments have been made about this mystery decoder that's in this locomotive. Not really a mystery. It is a Tsunami 1, 1 decoder, not a Tsunami 2. So the CVs are different. Uh, things, something, Certain things are different than the Tsunami 2. So this means that this locomotive is a little bit older than I thought it was. But that's okay, because I still like it. I still think it looks pretty good. It's got the beacon light, it's got the headlight. That's really, you know... Couldn't ask for more. I like having a beacon light. It sounds good. Doesn't look like that there's a way to turn the prime mover off, unfortunately. 
I, I was going through CVs and functions and everything and haven't found anything that allows it to shut the prime mover down. So we could just mute and we can unmute. So that means that when the power is onto the track, it's going to turn on. So let's say we cycle the power here. We'll get our prime mover start up. So we have that. Uh, I have changed it to its long address. I went through that. I set my program track back up for my DCC system. And uh, I messed with the acceleration and deceleration CVs, but I think I already told you that. The speed table needs to be messed with on this locomotive because it is quite fast. I have only about, according to the DCC system, I only put about 3% into the throttle and it's moving quite fast for only 3% throttle so that needs to be changed but and we have our braking down give it a little bit more so that's about that fast and it only has 7% into the ECC system so like I said the speed table, the speed table definitely needs to be messed with. So, other than that, it runs good. It runs good. It just needs a current keeper because certain spots on the layout it will die. So, I'm gonna get some cars into that siding back there, and we're gonna we're gonna take them out of that siding. So, give me one second, and we'll end the video off. All right, we have a couple of flat cars into that siding. We have our GP50, and we're going to do some switching here. We're going to take those cars, and we're going to just take them out of the siding, and we're going to pull them around the layout until we get to the switch that will kill the locomotive. So, two honks of the horn. Get it moving. Power down. Flip the switch. Now I also might die right here. And it did not. Good. We'll slow it down just a little bit. I didn't honk three times. Oops. See how it does over that switch. It is a good runner. I will say that. Just wish the... Uh, Decoder was different. That's it's an older decoder. It's still a good decoder. It's just an older decoder. It's I'm used to the newer stuff. So, well, made it over that switch just fine. I just turned power off by accident. Oops. That's on me. And we'll slow it down. Get those two coupled, coupled up. All right, she's ready to pull out. Two honks. Let me get you guys a better shot. All right, I took you guys off the tripod. See, there's the dead spot that I was talking about.
So over there is going to be a crossing. Not too bad. All right, I'm gonna get on the other side. Right here, you'll see it die on the track right there. Right there. There's the dead spot that I was talking about. So, anyway, with that, though, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, it's a good locomotive. I'm happy with it. I just, you know, wish some things were a little bit different about it, but... Hey, it's a good locomotive. It's, it looks nice. It just needs a current keeper, and then it'll, it'll be pretty good. I'll do some more tweaking with it, and uh, I'm sure I'll come to love it. So, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.